gdybyś miał okazję zadać pytania światowej sławy ekspertowi na temat Marsa, to o co byś zapytał? My pojechaliśmy po bandzie i zadaliśmy te największe i najciekawsze pytania dla każdego marsjańskiego nerda. Czyli co z tym promieniowaniem w locie na Marsa? Co z terraformowaniem? Czy jest ono możliwe, czy nie? I w końcu jak będzie wyglądała ludzka cywilizacja na Marsie? Odpowiedzi na te pytania tuż po intro. Zapraszam. Cześć, mam na imię Radek i jestem pasjonatem kosmosu. Na tym kanale opowiadam o ciekawostkach związanych z kosmosem i jego eksploracją oraz przeprowadzam wywiady z kosmicznymi ludźmi. Jeśli jesteś pierwszy raz tutaj, zasubskrybuj ten kanał, aby nie przegapić następnych wideo. Razem z Karoliną Gawlik z redakcji Wind More Space mieliśmy okazję porozmawiać z doktorem Robertem Zubrinem, inżynierem, twórcą Mars Direct, rewolucyjnego planu niskokosztowego lotu na Marsa, założycielem Mars Society i autorem książki Czas Marsa, wydanej w Polsce w 1997 roku, którą to zaczytywałem się z wypiekami na twarzy, będąc nastolatkiem. Z doktorem Robertem Zubrinem rozmawialiśmy w hali wystawowej podczas European Rover Challenge. Oto zapis naszej rozmowy dotyczącej Marsa. I think we're significantly closer. Uh, there's two things that have happened. Uh, first of all, uh, the official space programs have achieved quite a few significant discoveries relating to Mars. Um, we've discovered underground water on Mars. We've discovered glaciers on Mars of pure water as far south as 40 degrees north, which, for example, on Earth is the latitude of Athens. Uh, so water is available at mid-latitudes on Mars, not just at the pole. Um, and we have other evidence suggesting that there could be life on Mars today. And the resources available on Mars have become much more apparent and they're large. Um, the other thing though that has happened is that we've had a new phenomenon uh, breaking out, which is entrepreneurial space companies. Uh, and actually picking up the leadership as far as human space exploration or the prospects for human space exploration are concerned. And, uh, okay, the clear leader of the pack has been Elon Musk and SpaceX. Um, they have now shown that they can develop uh, new space systems, including big and important ones like heavy lift boosters, uh, projects that previously it was thought that only the governments of superpowers could do. They've shown they could do it um, in half the time at one-tenth the cost had been previously assumed. And not only that, do things that major space agencies that have been around for 60 years have thought was impossible, such as flying the booster rocket back to the landing site and landing it. Um, so this is a breakthrough and it has enormous repercussions. Um, that go way beyond SpaceX and even beyond the space program. Musk, he, he's a risk taker and he wouldn't have gotten this far if he wasn't a risk taker. But, okay, he skates on the edge of the ice. Maybe he'll fall off, could happen. But even if he does, he's already won the game. That is, he has let the cats out of the bag. He has proven this can be done and so others are going to copy him. There's going to be more space exes. There'll be more American space exes. There'll be European space exes, Asian, Indian. Um, I think there probably will be a Polish space ex. Okay, and they will compete, and uh, they will uh, each outdo the others in achievement. They will drive the technology forward, and they will drive the price of space launch down, and of space systems, spacecraft, space instruments. All of this will all become cheaper, and so instead of it costing Uh, you know, billions of dollars, it will, to go to space, it will cost millions and then it will cost thousands. Um, it will be like air travel. And um, so this is going to open up the space frontier. So these are enormous developments and uh, yeah, we're a lot closer to Mars now. 
and not just closer to sending the first people to Mars, closer to creating a situation where humans can settle Mars. Uh, as far as zero gravity is concerned, you can fly to Mars in an artificial gravity spacecraft that works by spinning it and it will create gravity and avoid the weakening. This is uh, much more important for settlers, for explorers than for settlers. An explorer who's going to Mars for a year, um, his time is precious. We don't want him wasting six months regaining his strength. For a settler, it's inconvenient to waste six months, but it's not that as material. But either way, I support using artificial gravity as the way to prevent this weakening effect. Um, as far as radiation is concerned, um, the amount of radiation you would get in a round-trip Mars mission is equal to about a 1% risk of getting cancer at some point later in your life, assuming that medicine does not advance beyond what it currently is. Um, of course, if medicine does advance beyond what it currently is and we find the cure to cancer, then this will be much less relevant. But even so, 1% uh, risk of cancer if you flew on the space shuttle, there's a 2% chance you'd get blown to pieces. Um, and yet, if they offered you a chance to fly on the space shuttle, would you accept or would you refuse? I would accept. <laughs> Terraforming Mars is possible. And that's not to say that it's easy. This is a big project. This is, you know, we can have humans on Mars by 2030, we're not, I mean, terraforming Mars will take hundreds of years. Um, we're talking about altering the, uh, the atmosphere and climate of a planet. But we can already sketch out in a general form how that could be done um, by using artificial greenhouse gases to warm the planet, which will form, force carbon dioxide that's currently soaked in the soil to come out of the soil and thicken the atmosphere. Um, and warm the planet even more. That's the basic idea. But my guess actually is that when it's finally done, it will be done by ways that we can't even imagine now because it will be done by people who have much more advanced technology and scientific knowledge than we currently have. Uh, there may be life underground on Mars today. Um, and I think it's of scientific interest and we should go there and set up drills and reach the water and take samples of the water so we can see what the native life on Mars is like. Okay, and, and that has great scientific value. But Mars um, is more than an object of scientific inquiry. It's a world, it's a planet, and its surface is barren of life. And if anyone told, suggested to you or me or almost anyone I can think of that, well, let's take the Earth and make it surface like that of Mars, uh, you would say, that is insane. Okay, that is a crazy idea. The Earth is so much better than Mars with all this life on its surface and and, and different species of plants and animals and civilizations and used bookstores and all this great stuff. Uh, you would have to be insane to want to make Earth as it is now like Mars as it is now, because that would be the worst act of environmental destruction that almost anyone could imagine. Okay, well, if you could do the reverse, if you could take a planet that is in the condition of Mars and turn it into a wondrous living world like the Earth, filled with plants and animals and, 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 and people and nations and universities and used bookstores, um, then that's the most wonderful act of environmental construction you could possibly do. So the people that say, oh, it would be wrong to change Mars from its natural state, uh, I don't view that as an environmentalist statement. I view that as an anti-environmentalist statement. A, a radical anti-environmentalist statement. And all they're really saying is, we don't care whether it's this way or that way, we're just against humans doing it. Um, if people do it, it must be wrong. 
Whereas I think there are things that are right and things that are wrong, and if you do the things that are right, you're right, and if you do the things that are wrong, you're wrong, okay? <laughs>go to Mars, and if we do terraform Mars, we'll bring other kinds of animals and plants with us, uh, many different kinds, and they, however, will change once they're on Mars, because it is a new environment, and, you know, no matter what you do, Mars will always be different from Earth in that it will always have, for instance, less gravity. And so animals and plants, when they go into a new environment, will adapt in new ways, because the proper design that they started was is not the proper design for that okay and this is how new species are created animals migrate into a colder climate they get thicker fur humans migrated from africa into europe and we developed clothes uh <laughs> okay um no it's true uh we developed a host of adaptations that allowed us to live in new environments we also did change biologically uh somewhat I mean, Europeans are white because they left the high intensity sunlight of the tropics where you needed to have heavy pigment in the skin and they came to a place where there was less and so the adaptation changed. I think when humans go to Mars, uh, we will, um, well, first our cultural forms will change. They can change much faster than biologic forms. Um, but ultimately, I think our biological forms will change too. Uh, certainly, children born and raised on Mars will wonder why anyone ever would want to live on Earth where the gravity is so heavy. Uh, I mean, this is ridiculous. Why live in this dump where you can't even jump five feet? <laughs> Probably the physiology will change, but the things that I'm most excited about are the possibility for new branches of human civilization. Um, which will have new dialects and ultimately new languages, new literatures, new social forms, um, perhaps new religions. I don't believe that humanity today has exhausted all the possibilities of social thought. I think that there will always be people with new ideas of how society should be organized and how people should live together. And in general, these sorts of people are not popular among most people around them. And if their ideas are to be given a try, they need to have some place else they can go. And this is a fundamental form of freedom, if you will. Now, so they'll go to Mars. And, and there won't just be one Martian civilization. There'll be dozens. Mars has got as much land as the whole Earth has land. Um, and some of these colonies will fail because some of these new ideas will be wrong. Okay? But some may be right. And... Uh, and if they're demonstrated to be right, if they're demonstrated to give human beings more potential to uh, develop their talents, they'll succeed. And not only that, people will go there. People will emigrate there. People want to want to be part of this. And so those colonies will grow, they'll prosper, and they'll set an example for the rest of humanity. And, uh, you know, this is how America has functioned to a certain extent invented democracy and various technologies, steamboats, telegraphs, electric light bulbs, airplanes, computers, and all this. But, you know, we created a form of society without a blood aristocracy, without, you know, a tyranny. And people said, that's where I want to be. And so they voted with their feet to come there. Uh, and so we grew with the talents of immigrants from all over the world. And, but in addition, we set an example which ultimately became the standard. And countries which refused to adopt the standard had to put up walls to keep their people in. Um, you may have heard of such countries. Um, if the Martians find a better way, people will go there. Because uh, you can't put a wall over the whole sky. No, I think most of the people, all the people practically that go to Mars will be self-motivated. Um, they may have different motivations. Some might go because of the chance to do something with their life of immortal significance, creating a new world for humanity. Others might go because the pay there is going to be higher. Okay, it will be because you're going to have a labor shortage on Mars uh, and that implies higher pay. Um, 
You're also going to have, um, in certain kinds of freedom, less, okay, because of the nature of the physical environment, but in certain kinds, more, because you, I mean, what is a Mars colony going to be? It's going to be a group of technologically skilled people in a frontier environment where they're going to be forced to innovate and free to innovate. They're going to have no patience for bureaucratic rules stopping them from making inventions that are necessary for their progress and survival. And so uh, it will be a pressure cooker for invention. I mean, if you're an artist, wouldn't you like to be in an artist colony? Uh, the, uh, I mean, maybe not all, but many would rather be in an artist colony among other artists and people who think that art is what life is all about than just living in a pleasant suburb somewhere. So in any case, those who believe in it will go. Those who want to do it will do it. A na koniec pytanie do ciebie. Czy powinniśmy dokonać terraformacji Marsa? Daj znać koniecznie w komentarzu. Jeśli podobało Ci się to wideo, proszę o łapki w górę, e, zasubskrybuj ten kanał, aby nie przegapić następnych e, ciekawych materiałów o Marsie i nie tylko. E, kilka z nich podlinkowałem tutaj obok. Do zobaczenia. Cześć!